Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Design Professionals YouTube channel. My name is Davina Parbu and I am the host. I passed all six ARE exams within about a year and I'm here to share my advice with anyone looking to become a licensed architect. If you're not already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at dp.designprofessionals. I've been sharing some exclusive content on Instagram that you can't find here on the channel, so make sure to look us up. In this episode, we are continuing the study tips and tricks theme, but focusing on strategies to take notes. It may seem like a simple no-brainer topic, but figuring out a few simple tricks can make a world of difference in your studying. Before we get started, I just want to do a quick reminder that we do have some merch available. The link to the shop is down below in the description. In the shop, we have a variety of architect merch, ranging from crewnecks and t-shirts to stickers and tote bags. So be sure to check out that link for some awesome minimal architect swag. Alrighty then, let's get into some of my favorite tips and tricks for taking and organizing notes. Before you can figure out what note-taking style is best for you, you first need to ask yourself a few questions and figure out how your brain works, what type of learner are you, and what types of formats work best for your brain. For me, I'm a visual learner, as probably many architects are, and I need to actively be involved in the studying process, which for me means highlighting key phrases as I was reading or taking notes after reading a section or a topic of a resource. For others, their preferred note-taking style was Excel, sp Excel spreadsheets, type notes, highlighting study materials, writing notes in a binder, making note cards, or even creating digital word maps. There are an endless way of taking notes, and you need to find what format best works with your mind, and it may take some trial and error, and it may be more than one style. I'll be going in depth on a few things that worked for me. Over the course of time, I realized that taking physical handwritten notes made it easier for my brain to remember information. At one point, I was handwriting notes on my iPad, and that was not as effective as a gold, good old pen and paper. I think that the pen and paper method was so successful for me because I was always excited about using my stationery. And I'm big into stationery, if you haven't already learned from my previous video, video on motivation during the exam process. After an exam, I would often buy new pens and highlighters as a reward, but also to encourage and motivate myself to jump into the next exam. When it came to actually taking notes, legibility and organization were key. I always wanted to make my notes look aesthetically pleasing because that was further motivation not only to make them, but to look back at them. We as designers have a keen eye for aesthetics, so playing into that likely gives us a little serotonin boost, even when we are doing something that can sometimes be torturous. I took most of my notes in my favorite blue dot grid notebook so my notes would always be in one place and I knew where I could refer back to them. The link to my favorite notebook is down below. At one point I had random sheets of paper notes in binders and folders and that just caused additional unneeded friction in the studying process. You always wanna make the process as easy and frictionless as possible and make the likelihood of continuing that habit possible. The second part of note taking that really worked for me was making bullet points and lists. I had to teach myself to only write down the most important things. This took some learning and training on my part. Instead of writing down entire sentences, I would just write down keywords or topics. This would force me to analyze the study materials as I was reading to figure out which parts were important. At the beginning of my studies, I was writing down way too much information, which made it difficult to even refer back to my notes to study from. The information was not organized, I couldn't find the information I was looking for, and it was just a lot of words and information to process. I couldn't skim through my notes to find the most important bits. After I finally learned what worked with my brain, I typically organized my notes into categories and made lists like you see on the right. Once I figured out how to organize similar bits of information, learning the content became easier. For example, I could list out the different types of concrete admixtures and at a high level list what each was used for. Seeing this information in a list also helped my brain organize the information in my mind. Digital notes are another great form of note taking. It worked for me to a certain extent. Many of the study materials I had were PDF documents. Some of these I printed out at work, of course, and carried them around to study. At a certain point, the stack of papers I was looking around was comical and ridiculous, so I looked into alternatives. I had tried reading the PDFs from my laptop, but I could not get my brain to retain the information, and oftentimes I would fall asleep while reading. 
That's when I invested in myself and my studies, and I bought an iPad with the Apple Pencil. Link is also down below. With the iPad, I could load PDFs or entire eBooks into it and study on the go. I no longer had to print hundreds of pages of PDFs and lug them around in my backpack to and from work every day. The real game changer is the Good Notes app. It's also linked down below in the comments. This app lets you load PDF documents, highlight, make handwritten notes, and bookmark pages. The great thing is that everything is searchable, including your handwriting. This means that if I was looking for radon, for example, I could search for it and GoodNotes would show me all the documents and notes that mention radon, including my handwritten notes. This was particularly helpful when I was studying across multiple study resources and needed to find a specific topic across all resources, like in the PPD and PDD exams. Earlier, I mentioned that digital notes worked for me to a certain extent. Where this system did not work for me was when I had both handwritten notes in my notebook and in GoodNotes. This made it more difficult to remember where I was taking notes and where to write or find the information. Once I eliminated handwritten notes in GoodNotes, I limited it to just small notes in the margins of my study resources. The study process was much more straightforward. I used the iPad like a textbook and highlighted the textbook while still using my notebook for handwritten notes. This helped make my notebook the single source of truth or my study Bible, as my friends would often refer to it as. One of my other favorite digital notes resources was digital flashcards. This was great for me because I love using flashcards as a way to study and really test my knowledge, but I hate spending hours making them. On Quizlet, I could search for the exam I was studying for and study sets that other people had already made. I would use their flashcards as my own, which saved a bunch of time. Quizlet is available as an app or on your web browser, so you could use it on your phone or computer or iPad. I placed the link also down below. I used the app on my phone and would study flashcards on my commute to and from work every day. I enjoyed how it was gamified studying, so you didn't always have to study in flashcard mode. You could do a quiz, learning mode, or matching memory game. This is a great tool to switch up studying formats. I could study from my bed or the couch or the train easily from my phone. To recap, I would like to emphasize the importance of finding out what works best for you. All of our brains are wired a little bit differently, so what works for me might not be the best thing for you. Finding that special study recipe will take some time, trial, and error, but keep trying different methods until you find one that sticks. Talk to other people about their study techniques and see if you can find one that resonates with you. It might not just be one thing. Sometimes I had to put information in an Excel spreadsheet. Sometimes I had to write things over and over again on the mirror in my room to make info stick in my brain. Sometimes it was writing simplified lists or coming up with ridiculous stories to help me memorize a concept. Sometimes I would have to read the same topic across three different textbooks to get a full understanding of the topic. There's a variety of things and you just have to kind of test it out to see what works. In recent weeks, I have even started to see people use AI modules like ChatGPT to help them study. I'll get more into this in a future video. If you have a study technique that has worked for you, please comment on this video down below to share your strategies with the rest of the community. I'm sure it'll help tons. And with that, that brings us to the dog of the day. And the dog of the day is Axel. Axel is best friends with Han, one of our previous dogs of the day. He is the lead singer of Guns and Noses, loves architecture, sticks, and turkey. You can find him on Instagram at his handle on the screen, Axel Guns and Noses. And if you have a dog or pet you would like to be featured in a future video, you can email me at dp.designprof at gmail.com. Send in five to ten photos of your dog or pet, as well as a few fun facts. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button and remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And let me know down in the comments if you like this video or if you have any topics you would like to see for future videos. Thank you so much and see y'all next time.